What time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know, just where it's at. Right down there. Right down there. And it's time to follow my Instagram. That's Geekly Amanda. G E E K L Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. Make sure to follow me there, too. And it's time to get this Roger video started. I wanted to watch this video because you know I grew up like a in the Christian faith. Like, I was raised Catholic and everything, so I know all about the Jesus. I do. I know. Look, they made a study. I went to school. I went to Catholic school. We had a class every day, religion class, and we studied the Bible. Well, that's why I wanted to watch this video. It says why Rama and Jesus are an inspiration. I, I feel like I know why both of them are. <laughs> but I want to see what they say. Let's get it started. Oh, and it's by the, what's this, what's this sad guru, sad guru, sad guru? Y'all ready to do this? Let's go. We'll pick Rama as an example because Rama is a big icon oh. in, the, mm -hmm. in India. Yeah. See, he's born as a king. Mm -hmm. And he's coronated as a king. But because of some crazy situations. Because of that boon. He's forced to go and live in the jungle. The other wife, right? With his a new bride, a young oh. woman he marries. She's a princess. She's mm -hmm. made to live in the palace. But now, with this young woman, he goes and lives in the jungle. Yes. So today, in some stupid movie, you may sh they may show you scenes of how she's floating around in the jungle. No, you go and live in the jungle. Oh yeah, it ain't nice, right? They live in the jungle, mosquitoes. <sighs> However pretty you think you are right now, one month you go live in the jungle. <laughs> I we can't recognize you after that. No Wi-Fi? <laughs> I so this princess no air forced condition? to live in the jungle. And fortunately, his brother follows him, knowing the difficulties that they may face. Mm. He leaves his, his own brother. family, mm. goes there to serve his brother mm. and his sister-in-law. I was touring Andhra Pradesh just ten days ago, ten, fifteen days ago. I'm in a small town. One fourteen-year-old schoolgirl stands up and says, Sadhguru, Sadhguru, how is it possible that Sita gets kidnapped? and taken to Sri Lanka oh, that's the island and Rama to... walks all the way from Ayodhya to Sri Lanka. How is it possible? Is it true? Then I asked her, see you are still a young girl, one day you will find a man. When you find a man, would you like to find a man that if you get lost somewhere, he will walk all the way? Or he thinks it's not practical. <laughs> <laughs> my, listen, my bam better walk all the way. Well, he better just get there as fast as he can. And find a girl next door. <laughs> what would you like? I like him, he talks. Us, even the fourteen-year-old girl knows she wants a man who'll walk all the way. <laughs> so he talks and like makes then it he modern went there, day, right? Collected some Tamil people built an army. Yeah, yeah, it's a Tamil army. <laughs> then fought a battle, went to Sri Lanka, burned down the entire city. Mm, that's right. With Hanuman, right? Hanuman had his tail a great on Great difficulty. <laughs> In the process, he lost many people who were dear to him. Mm. <clears throat> but he brought back his wife. But political pressure became so much, he like had to put part. her through kind of a fire test. Oh, I don't like this Whatever, part. of the day. Then he made her his queen and started ruling the nation. Again, some political situations forced mm -hmm. him. She was pregnant. With love and kush. At that time, he had to again send her back to the jungle. No sonogram. No sonogram. <laughs> so he does <laughs> not know funny. whether it's a boy or a girl or boys or we girls, know. what? It's love and kush. She goes into the forest and delivers to boys, twins, mm -hmm. unknowingly, not knowing that they are his children, he fights a battle with them. Oh, I didn't even know that. He could have killed them, not knowing they are his children. 
if you somehow so happen by accident you killed your own children can't be a worse tragedy in your life isn't it terrible thing to do he almost got close to it he almost killed them but fortunately they did not die in the battle and then she died in the jungle never again saw his face this is sad this is a you call this a successful life <laughs> I am asking you, <laughs> you call this a successful life? No. It's sad. But we worship him mm -hmm. not because he was a super success of the day. Any one of these events happened in your life, most people would be broken, bitter for the rest of their mm -hmm. life. No matter what happened, he never became bitter, mm -hmm. he never became angry. He never became hateful. Oh. He took all the action that he had to take. He fought battles, but never got angry, never became hateful, never became bitter in his life. Though what life threw at him was one tragedy after another, he remained above it. And we worship that because essentially… That's all that's touching. Essentially in your life, this is all it is. What the world will throw at you, it is not hundred percent your choice. To some extent we can control, that's about it. The world may throw anything at you, for you right? we don't know what it will throw at you. It may throw disease at you, it may throw de death at you, it may throw bullets at you, it may throw shame at you, it, it may throw all kinds of things. But what you make out of it is hundred percent yours. That's true. Oh, I like this guy. Now, hey. this one thing, if you take charge, no matter what world throws at you, you will turn it into your well-being. Then, where you go, what kind of situations in li you live, whether you go to heaven or hell, doesn't matter because whatever is thrown at you, you know you will turn it into well-being. This quality is what we are worshipping. This quality is what is worth worshipping because this is true with every one of us. touching me. <laughs> if world throws nastiness, mm -hmm. you will become nasty. World throws bitterness, you will become bitter. World throws anger, you will become angry. This is the way most human beings live because he lived above that. We said he is godlike. But what happened in their life, the physical events of their life, if you look at it, it's one big tragedy. At the age of thirty-two, you got nailed. That's when you talk about Jesus. Had a terrible death. You call that a successful life? No. But we bow down to him because it seems, we don't know, but we believe, or people have believed always, that even when he was nailed, he said, they know not what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Forgive them. For that we bow down to him. Not because he got nailed. Because getting nailed is not a successful life, Jesus isn't name, it? Huh? But even if you nail him, he did not lose his quality. For that we bow down. So that's all that matters to us, whether they existed or not. That they are an inspiration for you, whether everything that's said about them is true or not. Even this is not your problem. You're not a historian. All right? You just need some icon to move towards a better way of existing for yourself, that's all. What does it matter? Krishna did not exist, Jesus did not exist, what does it matter to you? Two thousand years ago, whether a man lived or did not live, or it's just a figment of somebody's imagination, what does it matter? It is the quality that matters, isn't it? We recognize these qualities as great qualities in some way trying to emulate them to whatever extent one can. That's what we're looking at. I like him. Although I don't agree with everything he says, <laughs> but I do like him. I spent, well, the part I didn't agree with when he was like, even if they don't exist, what does it matter? But I think that does matter a little bit, right? Because if it, if it didn't exist, right, if they didn't exist, and you don't believe that they exist, it could be just like a figure on TV, Captain America or Superman, you know, <laughs> right? 
those we know are not real and and just you know made up characters but they have good qualities to look up for to look up to right they have good qualities they they you know good versus evil they're you know saving lives they're they're they i mean they have these heroic inspirational qualities to look up for, for but in the end you know that they're not real this guy said what does it matter if krishna or jesus is real but i feel like it does matter in that case because if it didn't matter they could just be another superhero that we look up to but it's not they were i think it's important to realize that they did come here and exist to make it more human to be like look at these figures and although they're godlike right <laughs> they're avid, you know, christian avatar god jesus they you know they say ah he's the holy trinity you know the father son and the holy spirit but they're also historic figures that we know he were here on earth and we from the his historic books we know the sacrifices they did the miracles they did and that they were really here and did this so i think it i don't know it hits more when you know it really happened and that they were these figures to look up to in real life not just some superhero in the movies y'all understand what i'm saying <laughs> so i like like he was making me tear up oh talk about ram because i never even thought about it that way i mean i know he lost his wife but you never think about the tragedies they went to and like yeah he didn't have a great life right I mean, I was I was tearing up from that, but I didn't agree with everything, especially that last part he said. I think it matters to for us to know that they were here and and real figures and and this is real people to look up to, not just some made up character on TV. Anyway, let me know what you think. Comments, thumbs, all that, and I need to go blow my nose. Bye, y'all.